Hey developers, today we're gonna to look at five reasons why you should not become a software developer. Now you might hear a lot of people say that you should become a software developer, so I wanna see the other side and talk about reasons why maybe you shouldn't. So before we begin, one word from our sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Progress. Now if you don't know who Progress is, they're behind Kendo UI, they created NativeScript, they do a lot of stuff in the mobile development landscape, and they created this ebook, it's 100% free, in the description below, make sure you click on the link. You can put your email address in and get this ebook and it has everything about the mobile development landscape. It's actually a pretty interesting read. It talks about mobile development in the early days and what it's like to create mobile apps today. So make sure you click on that link in the description and you can download this free ebook and let's begin. So here is my presentation on five reasons why you should not become a software developer. And this goes for web development and pretty much DevOps too. I think these are all quite related. And by the way, there's a few other YouTubers that have done similar videos. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to one of them below so you can check out a different idea from Jarvis. So the first reason why you probably shouldn't become a software developer is because it's hard. And usually there's three different types of people who join this field. They either have a traditional education from a college and a four-year university or a two-year associate's degree. They actually might have gone to a coding boot camp or they were self-taught. And so if you are coming from a college background, this is probably maybe the, the easiest of the three paths, which is not easy at all because if anyone that anyone you know who's gone through the software development, curriculum or a computer science curriculum at a university can tell you that it has some gaps in knowledge that you'll need to figure out for yourself when you actually get your first real job. So you may learn a lot about compilers or algorithms or C, C++, Java, but you may not learn the latest JavaScript framework. You may not even get much JavaScript work in. You may not learn about version control or AWS, or a lot of things that you might end up using in your day-to-day -day job. So really, you're gonna have to work a lot harder outside of your classroom to learn these skills. So I would make sure that you do that if you're in college right now, and that is not easy to do. Bootcamp, I think, is kind of in that middle part between self-taught and college. If you've got a, a bootcamp, it's usually three months, maybe six months. It's a very, very quick curriculum and you're gonna learn just enough to get that job and really, depending on the bootcamp, it may not be even close to enough to get a job. You might still have to do a lot of networking, you might still have to put out quite a few resumes, do a lot of interviews, and some employers will look at that bootcamp and not think it's as valuable as a college education, but it's at least something and really, you only learn about one hundredth of what you need to know in a day-to-day -day job when you go to a boot camp. It's really just enough to maybe get you in the door as a junior developer. So boot camps also are pretty expensive, so that's another thing. Now, self-taught, I've said this before, but it's really the hard mode in life. So if you're gonna be have the discipline to sit down, spend hours upon hours on your weekends and nights working and learning, watching Udemy, watching YouTube videos like this one, it's gonna be difficult. And what's really hard is that there was an article that just came out recently that's saying Google and Apple and other tech companies have dropped the requirement of having a college degree. And I really don't like that article because they really never had that requirement. But the reality of the situation is is that if you don't have experience and you don't have any degree or at least a boot camp, it's gonna be really, really hard to even get into the door, to even get an interview. And just forget it if you're at trying to do it for Apple or or Google or Microsoft. I mean, I, I'm sure there's a few cases of someone that was well known in the community or had some amazing open source projects or had um, came from a different background and moved into development that was able to get a job without any experience and without a college degree or at least a boot camp, but it's very rare. It's a super hard road to go. There's some amazing people that have done it really well. My buddy Dylan from Coding Tutorials 360, he's been able to do it, but that guy worked his butt off. He worked every night and weekend he could after his nine to five job to learn programming. He uploaded free code camp tutorials on YouTube. Chris John, he worked his butt off for three months to get his job, and he even says himself that it was a lot of luck. So self-taught road is really difficult, but 
there is some success stories, but really overall learning and becoming a software developer is hard. Uh, underrepresented, so I kind of put this slide in, it's maybe a little controversial, but there's been some really um, crazy articles coming around out lately that women, especially women are underrepresented in tech. So women hold about 26% of computer and mathematical jobs in the USDA today, slightly below the level in 1960. So it's, they are overall, they are underrepresented. And I would say if you just look at the small like web development community or maybe software engineering, software development jobs in a whole, they are severely, at least what I've seen in the communities I've been very underrepresented. And so it's a difficult thing for, for, for women to get into tech. Um, there's some amazing organizations like um, women, there's a uh, women who code, there's a lot of uh, women organizations around like React and Vue and Angular. And there's, there's a lot of these things that are popping up and helping it out, but it's still not well represented. And just anecdotally, uh, I ran a Association of Computer Machinists Club, ACM club in college, where we taught people how to program. We put on programming contests. Uh, we did like lectures every week and it was really difficult to get women to come to our meetings. In fact, we've had some women that would go to our meetings, look inside the door and then turn around and walk away because they saw 20 geeky guys in a room and it just, you know, wasn't familiar with, uh, for them. And, and really, in, at least in my college, every class I had, especially when I got to the junior senior level, you know, there was like a one to 10 ratio between women and, and guys. And really that's nothing on their part. It's just kind of the, 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 the community and, and where we are at. It's just not a great situation. And i really hope that reverses, you know, I've been teaching my daughter how to program. So I'm hoping in the future that we see more and more women and, and people coming into this community and learning how to program. But it's definitely, if you're in a work environment, you're the only female and there's 20 other guys, it's definitely not, not great. So one other thing that's why you shouldn't be a software developer is that uh, if, especially right now, the economy is hot, there's a lot of jobs, at least especially in the United States, but it, there's tons of competition for the low level. So if you're coming in as a new developer and you don't have any experience, you're going to be competing with a lot of other people that don't have any experience that, that are looking for, a, looking for a job too. And the high level, there's a severe lack of, of talented programmers, but at the low level, it's it, your, your, the whole market is flooded. And I've seen just thousands of job openings for junior developers. They just get thousands of applications. It's just really hard to go through them and you need to stand out somehow. And so you're going to have to really up, up your game, up, up your skills to get a job. Social interaction. So there, there is this kind of stereotype that software developers, you know, are, you know, they, I guess they're really geeky and that they, you know, don't have a lot of friends or they work, uh, like in their mom's basement, for example. Uh, but really, you know, software developers come in all shapes, flavors, and, and sizes, but for the most part, your job is going to be in front of a computer eight hours a day. And you're going to have to learn to work well with teams and to all strive to a goal together. But really, you don't really need much interaction with other people other than like getting guidance from maybe your boss and, and, and maybe working with another coworker if you're pair programming. But I mean, it's, so, it's at, that, at this point that so many businesses, so many jobs are actually remote now that you don't even need to go into the office. You can just be on Slack all day, make your push requests, your pull requests. So really, if you crave that interaction with other people and the collaboration, this is not the field for you. This is not what you want to do. If you want to be outside, you're not going to be outside. If you want to work with customers, you're not going to do any of that. So you really need to get used to being in front of a computer, probably not talking to too many people other than maybe a few breaks in the water cooler and just working eight hours a day doing that. And uh, going beyond that, the industry moves really fast. So you might spend eight hours a day at your job, but you're probably going to spend another hour or two, maybe not every day, but every now and then, maybe once or twice a week, just kind of keeping up with the industry because things move so quickly, especially if you're looking to be a web developer, which I think is kind of the low hanging fruit for new developers that are looking to get into software and software engineering and software development. 
there's so many new frameworks, there's so many new things coming out all the time. There's a lot of debates between what's better. Do you like Vue? Do you like React? Do you like Ember? Um, and you might find yourself where you're, you are in a job that you really like. You're working on a specific technology stack. That means maybe you're working on Ruby on Rails. You might be on .NET, so you would work on some C-sharp projects. And then you have your front end is some other framework language. And you might be niche down and work on that every day. And you'll find out you know, two or three years in that everybody's moved past that. And if you ever lose your job or quit and go somewhere else, you just won't have the skills. You're gonna have to like relearn a lot of things and and try to learn these new industry standards. Um, I, can ma I can't imagine how fast things are moving on DevOps right now with development operations. That's the people that like handle everything from your, your continuous inter integration, your deployments of your code. Uh, they usually are Azure or Google, Google or Amazon, um, AWS, they actually handle all that. And those things are moving really quickly. A lot of new services are coming up. And just like web development, things are moving really quickly. So if you don't want to be in an industry that's moving quickly and fast, this is not the time that, uh, this is not the, the industry for you. And if you don't want to learn stuff outside of work, this is probably not for you either because there's just not enough time in the day to learn everything. Now, I'm not saying every day you're gonna have to spend two or three hours but uh, you probably should spend some time catching yourself up with new technologies and things like that. So that's it. That was my five reasons not to become a software developer in today, in 2018. I'd like to hear what you guys think in the comments below. What do you think about these five reasons? Do you guys agree, do you disagree? Do you have some counterpoints to them? I'd love to hear your arguments in the comments below. And if you guys like these type of videos, make sure you click that subscribe button and click that little bell button so you can be notified when I get the next one. I talk all about Vue.js, different information about different uh, frameworks and just general advice for new developers. So make sure you click on that. Thanks.